Hello, this is Max. The guy finds a job at a shopping center, where he meets the girl of his dreams during the night shift. Don't forget to subscribe. The film begins with Jim working a job where he spends more time talking than actually working. He even monologues to a group of dogs at his workplace. Jim's colleagues and the people around him see him as useless when it comes to practical work, and they are tired of his constant chatter. Jim continues to create elaborate stories about his life, such as claiming to be a wealthy businessman in the animal industry, owning numerous cars and employing many workers. However, all of these claims are pure fiction, and he only tells these tales to kids who might believe him, as he knows that adults would find his stories laughable. Jim's habit of incessant talking tends to alienate those around him, and he's accustomed to receiving cold shoulders from people. Despite his bravado, it becomes clear that Jim is struggling to find his place in the real world. After his unsuccessful job hunt, Jim heads to a restaurant where he strikes up conversations with the waitresses about the various types of food he claims to have eaten. Jobless and desperate, he visits a gas station and pleads with the owner for a job. However, it's revealed that Jim has been fired by this very gas station owner multiple times before. Jim goes so far as to offer to work for free, but the owner remains uninterested and advises Jim to leave town in search of better opportunities. As Jim comes to terms with the fact that his betting won't get him anywhere with the owner, he decides to leave. It's at this moment that he spots a beautiful and wealthy girl named Josie, who arrives in her fancy car. Jim immediately switches into gentleman mode, and Josie seems to appreciate his made-up polite behavior, responding with giggles and a wave from her car. Just as Jim and Josie seem to lock eyes, Jim's father, Bud Dodge, who appears to be fed up with his irresponsible son, approaches him and questions why he doesn't have a job. Jim quickly lies to his father, claiming that he didn't get fired but instead resigned from his job. His father is skeptical but doesn't press further. Bud then forcibly takes Jim home, leaving a less than impressive first impression on Josie. That night, during dinner, Jim's sister informs the family that Josie has left town as she's moved to New York. However, Jim contradicts her, stating that he saw Josie earlier that day and even had a cup of coffee with her. This revelation surprises his father, who then proceeds to share the unfortunate news that Jim has lost his job again and won't be able to pay the rent. Jim's situation continues to unravel as he struggles to keep up with his web of lies. The next morning, Jim's father is clearly frustrated with him for sleeping in late. He wakes Jim up and drives him to a mall called Target. During the drive, Jim's father tells him that if he doesn't secure a job at Target, he'll be sent to St. Louis, where his uncle lives and works as a gardener. Jim isn't pleased with this prospect and attempts to emotionally manipulate his father by asking if he wants Jim to move out of his life. His father clarifies that he just wants Jim to move out of his house, not out of his life. Once dropped off at the mall, Jim goes inside for a job interview. During the interview, the mall director mistakenly believes he is interviewing Jim for a different job vacancy, one that Jim didn't even apply for. Jim plays along and doesn't correct the director's error. When the director offers him a job and a number, Jim rejects it, stating that it's not the number he had in mind and requests the number 45 instead. The director agrees, and Jim quickly accepts the offer. As the interview is about to conclude, the director receives a call, learning that the intended candidate for the job is running late due to a missed flight. He realizes that he's offering the job to the wrong person who isn't even suitable for it. Consequently, he offers Jim a position as a night cleanup boy for $4 an hour, and Jim agrees to take the job. In another scene, we see Josie's wealthy father having a meeting with two gentlemen. Josie enters the room, and her father asks her to greet the two men. To his surprise, Josie gives one of the men a peck on the lips. After the meeting ends and the men leave, Josie's father, Roger, enters her room and sternly warns her not to repeat such behavior. That same night, two men are shown stealing a car, setting the stage for further developments in the story. The following day, Jim once again manages to surprise his father and the rest of the people around him. He decides to splurge on a limo ride to work, and during the journey, he encounters some kids he usually tells his tall tales to. This time, he spins a yarn about heading to the airport to catch a flight to Paris for a meeting with the vice president of Bulgaria. Upon arriving at his workplace, Jim adopts a boss-like demeanor, though his co-workers remain oblivious to his true identity. Meanwhile, Josie is at the mall too, engaged in shoplifting after hours. 
Later that night, Jim's boss, the head custodian, approaches him and outlines his duties, including cleaning the coffee maker and ensuring the entire mall is spotless. Jim is taken aback by the responsibilities. As the boss departs, he locks Jim inside the mall without any concern and even turns off the lights, leaving only the aisle lights on to avoid a high electricity bill. Initially frustrated, Jim eventually resigns himself to his fate and begins cleaning. However, he struggles to operate some of the equipment. During a break, he munches on snacks from the store. Feeling bored, he attempts to call his parents to discuss Christmas plans, but they are uninterested and hang up. Jim decides to explore the mall and starts enjoying himself. He even plays some drums and tries on a pair of roller skates, gliding around the empty mall. While skating, he unexpectedly spots Josie, causing him to lose balance and stumble. Meanwhile, Josie's father goes to the police station to report his missing daughter, prompting a search for Josie. Back at the mall, Josie reveals to Jim that she had fallen asleep there and had considered getting arrested for shoplifting but changed her mind. She also confides that she is unhappy living with her unpleasant father. Feeling hungry, Jim uses the mall's microwave to prepare a meal for himself and Josie. During their conversation, Jim mentions that his father works as a cement contractor and poured the pool's concrete at Josie's house. Jim continues to talk, and Josie notices his chattiness, prompting her to ask if he's always like this. To everyone's surprise, Jim admits that he usually isn't. Josie suggests that Jim should consider a career in sales, as she believes it would suit him better than his current job. Jim mentions that he tried sales once but didn't excel at it. After their meal, they sit down to chat, and Jim boasts about his preference for smoking an expensive cigarette after eating. Josie then reveals that she's known as the town liar, leaving Jim momentarily upset upon realizing that people are calling him a liar too. Jim quickly brushes off his momentary upset and resumes talking animatedly. Josie then reminds him of the extensive cleaning he still has to complete. Jim, however, dismisses her concern, noting that there is plenty of time until morning. Josie confesses that she had planned to steal some items because she wants to get arrested as a way to escape her despised father. She tells Jim that he's lucky to have a life he enjoys, but Jim disagrees, revealing that he's far from content with his job as a night cleaner. Jim takes offense, thinking that Josie is highlighting his flaws and returns to his cleaning duties. While Jim works, Josie plays rock music, and Jim starts grooving to it. When Josie sees him dancing, she abruptly turns off the music. Using the mall's public address system, Josie addresses Jim, urging him to share the truth about his aspirations and whether he genuinely enjoys living with his parents. Jim responds that he wasn't lying earlier, but Josie pushes him to open up further. The two engage in a conversation about their desires and the challenges they face. Jim eventually admits that he wasn't completely honest earlier. They both start discussing the negative aspects of their lives. Jim points out that, despite being wealthy, Josie wants to steal to escape her unpleasant father. In turn, Josie mentions that Jim is squandering his freedom. Jim questions why Josie couldn't simply talk to her father or leave him, and she responds with the same reason that Jim can't bring himself to leave his parents. The fear of living alone holds them back from taking that step. Josie suggests to Jim that they should leave town and move to California. At first, Jim is hesitant, but when Josie confides in him about the mistreatment she faces from her father, he agrees. Josie reveals that she has $52,000 in her purse, which they can use to start a new life together. They decide to run away in the morning, and their excitement leads them to dance together, culminating in a kiss. Meanwhile, Josie's father and the sheriff arrive at the mall in search of Josie. They question Jim about her whereabouts, but he lies, denying having seen her. As Jim and Josie continue to enjoy themselves while waiting for morning, two thieves manage to break into the mall. As Jim and Josie skate, they encounter Nestor Pyle and Gil Kinney, the two crooks, and accidentally knock them unconscious. When Jim and Josie realize the crooks are unconscious, they attempt to hide. However, the thieves soon regain consciousness and begin searching for Jim and Josie. They find them and demand that both lie down, interrogating them about their identities. Jim manages to trick the thieves and forces them to surrender. As they do so, they inform Jim that the gun he's holding isn't loaded. Jim offers a truce and returns their guns, but the thieves reveal that their guns are indeed loaded. Eventually, Josie cheats one of the crooks and persuades him to take her with them after they rob the store. While the criminals are loading stolen merchandise into their car, 
Josie jumps into the front seat and drives away, leaving the two men stranded in the parking lot. Inside the building, Jim locates a shotgun in the head custodian's locker. He uses it to his advantage, luring Nestor and Jill to the back of the store and holding them at gunpoint. As morning arrives, a police officer arrives at the scene and discovers the two tied-up crooks. Jim and Josie make their escape, and the next time we see them, they are lounging by a pool in Hollywood, having successfully evaded the crooks and law enforcement, and finally enjoying their newfound freedom. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen, and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.